Law Bulletin Publishing Company is the oldest continuously owned company in Chicago, privately held by the McFarland family since 1879. I joined the news business because it can be exciting and it changes every day. I sort through contradictory and confusing details of events and give readers the truth to the best of my ability. I enjoy particularly interviewing lawyers and judges and along with law students and telling their compelling stories. I've never wanted to do anything except work for a newspaper. It means I get to tell stories every day that matter and it's a job where I'm constantly learning. You get the chance to learn every day. On top of that, you get the chance to hopefully tell people in an entertaining and somewhat thought-provoking way the things you learn. The internet has certainly had an impact on the news industry. Newspapers will continue to evolve as the technology changes. I'm so excited by all the innovative ideas that we're implementing right now in the Law Bulletin. We have the hardest working staff in the business and we like to think outside the box and think of new creative ways to cover the legal community that makes my job fun. Welcome to our next installment of This Will Only Take a Moment. We're here with Bob Clifford, um, our 2012 Chicago Lawyer Person of the Year, and um, an accomplished law firm leader and personal injury lawyer. And we're also here with his daughter, Erin Clifford, who is a new lawyer. Um, and we're going to talk about their careers and just talk about their relationship. Thank you both very much. Sure, glad to be here. OK, well, um, I think we're going to start off with Aaron. Um, okay. How would you describe your father um, in terms of his law practice and being a lawyer? Um, in terms of uh, his law practice and being a lawyer, um, my father is uh, the, honest, the most honest person that um, I know. And just growing up around him, he's obviously so dynamic. But um, as a kid, I used to come and watch him all the time in the, the courthouse and when he would give his openings and closings. I, just watching him, uh, just the whole jury would just be so enamored with him and he just talked to them like they were a normal person. And I just, um, just admired him so much and it always struck me how much he cared about his clients. Uh, growing up, he always saw that I mean, he worked as hard as he could because he really believed in what he was doing. It wasn't just about the money or, you know, um, having this great practice, which he does have. But I think the reason he has this great practice is um, because of, you know, his love for what he does, his love for the law, his love for his clients, and how ethically he is with um, everyone he works with, everybody that he's against. I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. And Bob, how would you describe Aaron as, an, as well, a new lawyer? Well, <laughs> you know, well, I'm very proud of Aaron having the uh, gone to the bar, if you will. Mm -hmm. She uh, was a high school teacher uh, in the inner city in, in Chicago, and as many of us know, that's an extraordinarily uh, giving uh, uh, you know, profession. Uh, it's very taxing on the individual. Uh, she got kind of worn out about it, and uh, I had never really, I, I think it's a fair statement to say, I never pushed either Erin or her sister to go to law school. I kind of, I secretly, well, maybe not so secretly, I never really denied, <laughs> I never denied that I had that aspiration for right. them, but I, I never leaned on it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but, uh, you know, Erin is, has always demonstrated uh, being very committed and serious to any undertaking that she has gotten involved in, whether it was in high school projects or, you know, school plays uh, during her studies uh, in undergraduate school, uh, and then during her time as a teacher, you know, she cared about the kids. She had all the qualities, I think, that go into be, being a good lawyer, and, and, you know, you have to care about the people who are your charges, if you will. You have to be disciplined enough to master the substantive area that's controlling what you're doing, in this case now the law, or in her case then uh, teaching uh, English to high school students and challenged children. 
Uh, and so now with her being a lawyer, uh, I think it, uh, it fits a niche that uh, she really likes. She's a good writer uh, and she's very opinionated. Uh, she may be in doubt on some of her views, you know, and she may be wrong about them, but she's not in doubt about them. I mean, so she's, you know, yeah. she's, she's got strong uh, ideas, and uh, that is terrific when it comes to being an advocate. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really with great, um, uh, with great pride, uh, you know, watching her career unfold uh, before me, and it's kind of fun to, to see that, you know. It's a very special thing. We're lucky people. How would each of you describe the role of a lawyer? I mean, what does it mean? Because you both kind of have different areas of the law that you're pursuing um, or have been pursuing. Um, how would you describe the role of a lawyer? You know, it's, uh, it's funny you say that because I, I dealt with that issue just this morning. Uh -huh. Yesterday there was a lawsuit filed against Subways. Mm -hmm. And it's they're challenging Subways uh, foot long. Right. Okay. I saw that. And and so, and because it's only ten inches. Right. <laughs> now some people may think that's trite, and frankly, I do it to a degree. Mm -hmm. But isn't it wrong that we're constantly hit with things where people, for their own book, are putting what I call their thumb on the scale. Mm -hmm. You go to the grocery store and you ask for a half a pound of beef, and the butcher puts his thumb on the scale, and you get 0.45. Right. You're getting taken advantage of, and that and that's not right. And like. Right now we're in the midst of some of these uh, misbranding cases where you're being told that the product you're buying, you want to be healthy, is sugar free and you look on the back and it has evaporated cane juice in it. Mm -hmm. Or you, you look at how the airlines operate uh, and, and they crash these planes. And if you look at people who are drunk drivers and they cross the center line and they kill a guy leaving a wife and two kids, the, the point of all of this is that the role of a lawyer uh, for those who are in the litigation and the advocacy component of law are there seeking justice for their clients and and frankly I think probably even the business uh, lawyers are the same way because they're, they're, they're trying to make a proper fair deal for their clients because it's a just result governed by a rule of law that we have here in our democracy that gives us guidance about how to interact and, and proceed through life's many you know obstacles but to do it in a fair ethical proper way and that that to me is the role of a lawyer to make sure that happens mm -hmm. I, and I really agree with what my father said and that's one of the reasons I wanted to become a lawyer um, growing up my favorite book of all time is uh, to kill a mockingbird one of my favorite books to teach and I'm mean, growing up I mean my I really saw my dad as Atticus I mean that's what I thought of him because of just how ethical he was and how he really, you know, represented his clients. And to me, being a lawyer too is about, you know, being an advocate for the community as a whole. And, you know, it's not just about how you are in each individual case or what you're working on. It's just how you present yourself, you know, to the world on a daily basis of, you know, I mean, I think our job is, um, you know, to help those who, you know, can't help themselves. See, and I'm about to defend Socrates next week on a program. <laughs> and Socrates, I mean, we, we need people like Socrates in our world. Mm -hmm. I mean, here's a guy that is just giving provocative thought, you know, uh, to pe individuals, causing them to be introspective and ask questions and deal with an ethical society that's for the enhancement of the community, and they want to kill him. <laughs> right. I mean, someone's got to be there for him. There you <laughs> go. <Someone does. laughs> We're going to be. He's walking. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> what would you guys say is uh, the, the number one skill that a lawyer needs to possess to be successful in his or her career? Mm. I know. You start with that? Sure. I'm, I'm just starting off, so I don't, you know, just. Uh, to me, a really important skill is I think you have to be able to communicate well, but not only verbally. You have to be a good writer. I mean, that's and that's part of the reason I, you know, I'm starting off. I'm working um, over at the appellate court for Justice Terrence Lavin, who is just a uh, wonderful, wonderful writer and advocate. And you know, being able to learn from him um, is just fantastic because I really think that's something that you really have to acquire as a skill. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You know, it's uh, I'll, I'll approach it from a different angle and that is I think you I think you have to care uh, with a passion about your clients and uh, become very parental to their circumstance not not, not not necessarily parental to them but to their circumstance mm -hmm. because at least in my work people come to me when they are traumatized the most 
You know, in the last uh, two weeks, I've met with uh, a widower, a widow, a couple boys that have been blown up in you know an explosion. I mean, people who are in need of protection of the law mm -hmm. uh, to assert their rights, and and you have to care about them and try to get below the surface and, and, and get into their lives with a way that, that has compassion because then you can take that communicative skill that you hopefully have and and transfer what right. you know about them right. effectively in the courthouse, whether it be before a judge, a jury, or in mediation as so many of these things go nowadays. Mm -hmm. And 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 to me it's a joy to develop that art. You're always learning something. And it's never, it's, you know, I, 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 I learn something new every day. And I think one of the challenges for the legal profession going forward is how the, how we're probably not keeping up with the technology and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and how the business community is so rapidly advancing. And, uh, but so it's challenging for lawyers to, you know, be able to use that technology and incorporate it into their toolbox to effectively and more effectively represent their clients. Now, the last question I have is, um, you know, something that really came came out in the story about you is just the, the importance of charity and giving back to the community. And I wondered you know, if you guys could talk about how important that is in your family. I mean, it just seems like the whole family gives back. You know, whether it is teaching or you know, you know, through foundations or charities. Talk a little bit about just the importance of charity. You know, um, here we, we're on the eve of the uh, Naples Winter Wine Festival that my wife and I are are active in. It's a uh, it's the Naples Children and Education Foundation, and it's in Southwest Florida, and, and where they have very few social services. Uh, so it's a community. You know, we've always believed in being involved in the community, uh, and uh, it's a way to raise money. Uh, to help uh, these 150,000 plus at-risk and underprivileged children and you know and you feel good about it when you do it you're a better person for doing it uh, I don't mean to sound corny but I, I really believe that you know I get as much or more out of it than they do because I think it makes me a better person uh, I, I think when you're a charitable person and you're an advocate at the same time you just uh, have a, the ability to identify with people in, in ways that uh, uh, maybe are make me a better, more effective. And if that, and if I'm a better, more effective lawyer, then that's going to transcend into me more a better, more effective business lawyer and, and have a good, a good practice that's sustainable. Uh, and I've got young people that work for me that want a career, they want a life, that, you know. They, so I'm trying to build something for that, that uh, is sustainable for them. And so, you know, the charity work. Um, I, maybe it's Catholic guilt. I don't know. When you know, I've gone to 19 years of Catholic school, uh, and and uh, I, we've just uh, always been part of the fabric of our lives that you, you try to help people, and uh, and you can help them with either your time, or your talent, or your treasure. And I, I think there has to be a balance of some combination of those three things in your life to be a complete person. So that's why we do it. At least that's. And, and I think Erin and her sister Tracy and my wife Joan, you know, we kind of live that way. My wife Joan is the vice chair of the board of the Goodman Theater. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and, and it drives me nuts. I should be, I hate the opera, so I'm so happy that she <laughs> fell in love with the Goodman as opposed to the lyric. No disrespect to the lyric, but uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I feel very blessed, you know, I grew up in, you know, very fortunate circumstances with, you know, two parents, you know, um, that, you know, did everything in the world for us and, you know, now I count as, you know, my two best friends and, you know, but not everybody grew up like that and, I mean, it does, it feels really good to give back. I mean, when I was teaching, it really opened my eyes, you know, to what, you know, it's really like for most people and, um, you know, I, I just, uh, I, I just, I think it's really important, you know, to, uh, to participate in charities. I mean, I'm excited. One thing I'm very excited about being done with uh, law school is I can get back involved. I mean, I really, I do miss teaching high school, just in the sense that I really miss working with all the kids. And uh, that's something I'd really like to get more um, involved in. And it's just, it's the atmosphere I grew up in in my family. My parents are, you know, very big into philanthropy. And uh, that's something that I'd like to continue as well as my sister would. Great. Well, thank you both very much. Thank you. You do it. Thanks, thank for, you. Thanks for having us. Cool. <laughs>